Welcome, friends and comrades, to another interview hosted by the Midwestern Marx Institute for Marxist Theory and Political Analysis. My name is Camilo Godoy. I am a Chilean sociologist and MA in Environmental Studies. And today I will be speaking with Constanza Portus from Chile and Maria Laura Borla from Argentina about struggles against salmon farming in southern cities Puerto Williams from Chile and Ushuaia from Argentina. Well, firstly, Constanza, welcome. Uh, she is a dentist by profession and she has worked in sustainable tourism. Also, she has been actively part of social organizations as Territorio Yagans in Salmoneras and interethnic organizations that defend the local culture and environment of the Cape Horn and Beagle Channel from salmon farming. Facing the threat of salmon farming installation on the Beagle Channel in 2019, she also worked together with Argentina neighbors from Ushuaia to avoid this industry to expand in this pristine and amazing territory. And secondly, welcome Maria Laura from Argentina. She is a naturalist who has spent the last 38 years living and working in Ushuaia, facing the Beagle Channel. Her major interest has been the development of sustainable tourism practices in Tierra del Fuego, an area in which she made several important contributions in different specialized journals. Currently, she is an environmental activist since she understood that all forms of life are subject to what we all can do together to avoid more damage to our planet. So without further ado, we can get into our first question. We are here today to talk about today to talk about the struggle against Norwegian salmon farming expansion in southern Argentina and Chile, a process that surely was elicited by the visit of Norwegian kings to Buenos Aires in 2018 and to Santiago in 2019 in order to make lobby to expand salmon farming to the southern Antarctic region. So both of you participated in several ways actively in this conflict. How could you explain the conflict to people who maybe don't know so much about it? I don't know who wants to <laughs> who we going? I can start. Um, first of all, saying that in Argentina, we, are, we have a central government and 23 local govern, governors, pro, uh, governors of the, our provinces. And at that time, 2018, the president of Argentina invited all governors to think of a possible um, activity to be funded by Norway because it was expected that the authorities arrive in Argentina and then each govern governor had to make a proposal. And the proposal of our governor was to develop the salmon industry, knowing that Nor Norway is a leader in this topic. And then uh, that, that was the beginning of the story in Tierra del Fuego, Argentina, because you know, the name of Tierra del Fuego is also shared by Chile. 
Uh, I know on the Chilean side of Tierra del Fuego and the rest of southern Patagonia in Chile, uh, salmon farms have been set up for the last uh, decades. Uh, but it is not the case on the Argentine side of Tierra del Fuego. So, shall I continue? Or Constanza will tell me. Ah, I can explain just... because, yeah, I can continue because it's just perfect because we heard about uh, some of farm that were interested in, in, in being installed here close to Puerto Williams in the south side, uh, side of Canal Beagle, the Beagle, Beagle Channel, sorry, uh, in, in the south part of Ushuaia. So, um, that's why we are like so close in the story. We have a lot of friends and people have here family. So we heard about that activity that we were thinking to put some some of farms in the Beagle Channel. So it was like a, a crisis that we say what is happening. But we thought it was only in Argentina. So it were like all people being aware about news, about information, because all some of farming in Chile began in the 80s. And they began going going south in the Lake District, that is like uh, several kilometers north. But this work like Patagonia began to the south, close to Puerto Montt and Chiloé. And there's also like the the knowledge that they make a lot of uh, environmental uh, pollution and and problems because we have already two crises. One of the uh, ice is uh, ice virus in 2009, and then 2016 there was a big crisis in Chiloé that like all the country uh, have the news and that you at least know that it was something that is is not working even if it's the second industry in the country because the state had promoted a lot uh, that kind of industry that comes in the 80s like uh, something really new it can be really interesting because our fjords have really a lot of simi similarities to the Norwegian or Scandinavian fjords so that's the difference within Argentina and Chile that they don't have some farm, but then we listen and in this part of Chile, at least at the end of the Magellanic region, that is the southern region of Chile, uh, we haven't uh, some farm. So it was like, uh, wow, it's a big problem. So we were all people being really aware of what was happening. And then in the summer of 2019, uh, we began to see a boat that began to arrive. And the, the, uh, it's a town we live in a town that is 2,000 people, so we know each other. Uh, so the, the the information began to run, and then you began to ask, okay, I'm gonna ask this one because she. Uh, I was thinking she should know. Then a friend told me no. The other people were talking about that, so uh, they say that it could be about uh, new fishing, and then the salmon farm idea began to be like more. Uh, uh, possible and then it's like okay we need to have a meeting and then we began to have like meetings each week trying to reach information and then all the activity began um, to try to reach NGO lawyers authorities and we realized they were really installing some some farms in the south south um, um, east of the island just in front of Isla Picton and there were like three some of farms that were planning to be installed and that boat was bringing all the things in the night so you you see the boat arriving and then people was like a stranger people so no one know very much about them and so then we began to organize we reached people from Ushuaia also uh, and try to organize together to gather the information and know what was happening Yeah, I, so, I understand that. Yes. You want to make Do a question to, or yes. shall I continue? Uh, if you want to continue, perfect. But All right. I just All wanted right. to, to know a, a little so, about the, like the main difficulties that you, uh, as the community, you had to experience during this time uh, after you knew yeah. about the this kind of uh, endeavor of the government. Well, at the, at the beginning, our governor announced uh, the news about this project as something good that would create employment. And um, it was um, welcomed by some people from our community. But 
uh, of course, very, very quickly, we had a reaction expressing our ideas because we are uh, environmental activists and we, of course, know all the damage that salmon farms are uh, doing along the coast of Chile. And uh, of course, we all agree that that's a lot of money for owners and uh, uh, managers, but not a lot of money for uh, workmen who devote their lives to that type of work. And besides, we know about our, we have in Ushuaia a research center, and we have some uh, marine biologists who live here and uh, could teach us a lot about damaging produced by salmon farming uh, under the method proposed uh, by our government, which was the same as in Chile. Uh, that is to say, using uh, areas uh, protected along the Beagle Channel, which we share with Chile. We have the northern side here. We, we share part of the Beagle Channel, the northern side in Argentina, the southern side in Chile. And so we were very, uh, really concerned about the, not only the settlement on this side of the channel, but also where Constanza has just said in front, uh, that would be the same damage because the ecosystem is only one. Of course, you know, there is an imaginary line that is the boundary, but that boundary does not exist in the ecosystem. So, um, as soon as we could, we started to spread the news about the, um, the consequences that this could bring. At the same time, uh, we were working uh, not against, but in order to make our authorities understand that a project they had linked to some far, which was uh, the opening of a new road, had to be more carefully planned that that road had not been carefully planned and we did not understand why they wanted to make it so long, right? The answer we found was that the reason for that road was to get to the future farms of salmons. And that would be the road to bring the production to Shuaya, which is an 80,000 people town with uh, almost 1 million tourists a year. And uh, so also cruise liners who could purchase that action. And uh, so um, we started to work really hard. I was at the front line uh, in the struggle for the road. And uh, I was on the second line in the struggle for the salmon uh, farm settlement. Um, well, so right after uh, this uh, piece of news spread, uh, of course, we organized meetings. Uh, chefs in Ushuaia organized meetings. They invited chefs from the rest of Argentina. There is like a group of chefs that are uh, against all type of uh, food under uh, artificial produ production and feeding and uh, I mean organic food is what they 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 prefer and they promote so they all took pictures in the middle of Buenos Aires city at the foot of the obelisk saying no salmon farming no salmonicultura in Argentina or in Tierra del Fuego and so that was very, very, very strong in the press, in the media. And in general, we do not have such spreading in the news to produce because we are a small town and an insignificant province for the rest of the country. So uh, with, with the help of the chefs of Ushuaia, some of them very well known, we could reach that audience most of uh, the national news were spreading that something was wrong with salmon farming in Tierra del Fuego. So somewhat we had their support. Uh, 
uh, I don't know if they were aware of what they were doing because maybe if they scratched a little bit, they had made the other decision, but fortunately they were on our side this time and we could reach to a large audience in how bad uh, was this idea. And of course, a connection with uh, people, the community of Port Williams was essential. I don't know, Constanza, if you took part of that kind of expedition that was organized in front of Port Williams on Gable Island in the middle of the Beagle Channel, uh, just uh, with a big, big sign, kind of... Um, uh, Let's say no... No, this announcing no salmon, uh, salmonicultura, no salmonicultura in, in uh, here. Legal. No salmonicultura. Yes. No, I, 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 it was only for the Argentinian side when they go to, to put that sign, um, because that was the, the, the day the kings of Norway come to Puerto William. Because from our side, uh, one of the struggle was. Oh, oh, so one of the problem or oh, thinking on the question of, of Camilo is what the hell we need to do to appear in the news because if Ushuaia is insignificant we are a 2000 town at the end of uh, Chile that no one wanna uh, notice I don't know we need to burn something uh, doesn't care someone need to die maybe uh, it's really complicated to be able to reach some other so the media the, the media of the country so all of Argent what Argentina have done or, or what your group have done have helped a lot and the chef thing also even if in like the big media of Chile that Chile is also a really small country in, in all the like uh, um, more known uh, non uh, media is like uh, five options that you have so it doesn't appear very much there but what make us have a lot of attention was that after all the lobby they were making in Argentina like one year before and then six months earlier uh, in that March I think or at the beginning of March and also the, the the year the school year in Chile and like everything in Chile began in March February is really death and normally a lot of things happen in February so when you can react and the justice can react or any action can can have an, an can work. Uh, it's you need to wait until March. So doing things in February is part. I don't know if it's a plan, but it happened in several things. Uh, so that happened in February at the end of January, and so uh, in January we could make some actions, and then February come that no one know any uh, authority uh, institution, public institution uh, answer you, and then March arrived, and then we have the visit. Uh, of a company of businessmen from Norway that was invited by our president at the moment that was Piñera, that was also a businessman. And then the kings of Norway, I don't know why, they come behind them. So after all the meetings, so they have, they say they were like celebrating the, the I don't know, 100 years of political relationship or something like that. And then they go south, but the, only the kings because Puntarena, the kings and some businessmen arrived and some other parts of the committee, but only the kings wanted to come to Puerto Williams, where uh, Chile is really centralized, it's not a federal country as Argentina, so all, the question for us is why they want to come here? Because nothing is decided here. So for us it was, on the other hand, a help, because then we have the news, and we have political um, congressmen and people that come, and that we have managed to have arrived to some um, um, like alternative newspaper but that are like bigger in 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 the country to be heard and uh, that helped and so that day was the day where the king were coming here so it was like when you, you the feeling was when you go to a stadium and <laughs> you can do like everything because it was like a kind of party because we have a visit and all people were like uh, a little anxious, uh, all people were going to see. We managed to have like a group that were having like drums and, and music, to have sign, to have um, flags. And in that morning, the group from Ushuaia was going 
to Isla Gable that is just in from Puerto Williams and is where the channel is the the narrower the narrower part of the channel is like two kilometers to put the big sign uh, that says uh, no salmoneras in Canal Beagle in, in order that it, it maybe was possible to see by the plane. In the other hand, we put uh, a smaller sign because we could not manage to have a, a, a bigger, like the one that you make, because it was really big, uh, to put it in front of the sea also that say the same. And it was the name we decided as a group is Territorio Yagan Sin Salmoneras. It's because to remember that it's also an ancestral ter territory uh, where continue to be occupied by the Yagan community that's still alive, that is like the other message, and think that in that uh, like crisis, it began to push uh, up alone. And, and it was like a, a crazy day. I think it was really funny in a way because we were all people like organizing just to be behind the kings and trying to make noise, to be heard. Uh, the young community, uh, it was uh, Senora Cristina Calderon that died last year that was like a uh, name, like part of the uh, uh, heritage of the humanity, because it's the last one. She she said that she's not the last anyway, but she was like named the last one that uh, know to talk the language. And she has always worked to be spreading the culture, but is really one that used the language and, and managed to talk uh, in the Yagan language. So that was, it was like an authority in town. And she go to give the kings. So there's a photo, and there's uh, some images that goes in in one uh, news um, TV news that all the country was able to see it. That she was giving the, them a letter they write and saying for them what what is the importance of the sea for for her for all her family and culture to the two kings of Norway. So it's really like. Uh, symbolic what happened that day and they were in the museum where is the one that like uh, is protecting and working on, on on show all that culture to say to them that they are this if they so said they, they install the salmon farming there they gonna destroy like a culture because they are a, a sea people that they used to be nomad and, and live they live about the sea so uh, that's what happened it was all town also civil people, because we have also a lot of Navy people uh, of different classes. Uh, not all we are friends, we, we know each other, each other, but they were all supporting because it's like really the feeling when someone is visiting you uh, <laughs> it was something important happening. All people wanted to see and also that all people here feel the importance of being in nature. It's part of like our identity to live in a part that is really calm and really beauty. Uh, so it was uh, a little strange. It was really symbolic. Also, another thing we did, we did, is that the with the group and and it was an idea of the part of the Yagan community member that uh, work more actively was to paint our face as the Yagan does, with some motive like colors and motive. So, for example, for me that I'm not from here, I, I come to give the so I come to live here several years ago. It was like really o sea, amazing and strange because you were being using like signs from another culture that I have been I have learned a lot to appreciate because also in our school they don't teach us so much about the cultures. When I arrived here, it was like why I don't know uh, information about this, and it's a problem like about maybe all our country. And then you were able to go together. I don't know how many times they have painted their face also. And the kids uh, um, put clothes like uh, more in a traditional way. And each people just go with the, the flags, flags of Magallanic region also. That is really like uh, uh, everyone trying to, to show their identity to say, well, we are here. And we are also wanting to decide about uh, our town because if something like that arrived to pass, uh, there were maybe three places only, but we were thinking that it's not only three places. And in a small town like this, uh, if a lot of people arrive, they make a big change. So also the city was going to change. Also, the, maybe we're going to have a big port, as uh, Maria Laura was talking about the road. Also, maybe many other things were going to happen because they needed to move all that 
production and they're not they're not were not coming just for three uh, farms it was like uh, crazy to think that so uh, well that that was like our experience in that moment but the difficulties was to that was at the end of march so we have like two months where you don't know what to do what else we can do to try to reach authorities to try to you try to ask for meetings to try to write letters to try to write all the newspaper try to make like uh, some manifestation here we make some activities at the same time with Ushuaia, with people from Ushuaia and the group I imagine Maria Laura was. Uh, but they were oh, no, a lot more. I wasn't, but my friends were there. Yeah. Yeah, because we we began by making a photo uh, at the same moment and try to to put like do like a live by Facebook. It doesn't work the the, the network anyway. But we managed to have a photo at the same moment maybe i don't know like the energy work or something and then to begin to have uh, the same uh, social media i was I, I don't know why but i finished managing the, the 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 fan page in facebook that was called no salmoneras in canal beagle that we organized together with people uh, in ushuaia and then we it was me and i don't know if someone else have and then we arranged to uh, to see what we want to post of information then there were some other accounts in Instagram, in Twitter, etc. But this one was the one we shared together. So it was also strange, but in the moment we were all um, trying to, to show the same information and work. Then we make some other manifestation like to stop a ferry that was is the only boat that come from Punta Arenas. So it was, it was a little weird because it's like uh, something that helped the town. So people say, okay, but uh, we need the, the, the things that are coming, you cannot stop it. But we say it's the only thing we can make that old town known and said, uh, okay, we're going to stay here until the, the intendente, that is like uh, the chief of the region, comes here. That, of course, they don't, it was really uh, <laughs> not supposed to happen, but it's just to make the attention to come there. And then we began to also talk with people and show what were the problems, etc., until we arrived to reach that moment where the kings. Uh, wanted to come and that make that difference because then it appeared in all the newspaper appear uh, in newspapers international uh, and we have the congressman that come here that helps a lot because then after that we were invited to go to the a session of uh, the environmental commission in the congress of chile so they invite the community to go and then we have help of course of ngo to have that some people have a, a plane tickets to go, some others we managed to have, and we go to the Congress. So it was also really weird because then in, the people that were in Santiago that have lived in Puerto William appear because it's like, okay, we're going together. It was a kind of uh, really like a school thing in some, thing, in some way, really nice. But in the other, it's like, uh, okay, we are like playing all the cards we have. And that helps a lot to make some other laws um, actions with lawyers that we found have the, having the help of NGO. I, I think I'm going that other question, so I'm gonna let Camilo maybe <laughs> come yeah. to tell you. Of course, it's very interesting to to hear it from like the first person point of view, and of course, both of you have participated in this, so it's really interesting. And if we speak about like the identity dimension of this conflict, uh, it's very clear that, that this kind of uh, struggle uh, made the, the local people like gather. But at the same time, if we speak about the, like the geopolitical uh, dimension of this conflict, we are speaking about the Norway, the Norway state, the Norway state. Uh, planning to uh, make some farming in a territory which is very distant from, from theirs. And uh, our countries, as like the commodity providers, uh, what do you think about that? Like that kind of uh, difference in terms of power, uh, like what, what you said to me, to us, uh, the, the Norwegian kings traveling to here and trying to make all the plans uh, 
Well, um, it takes a long time to understand, but we finally arrived to the conclusion that uh, there are two main things to struggle for. One is environment and our planet, and second is geopolitics. I, I wanted to specialize in uh, political ecology, which is a discipline that uh, connects both things. It's a little bit difficult for me living in Ushuaia to specialize in, in that field. But, um, you know, we already have the capacity to smell when something is not really, really frank, really transparent. And so we, we felt that with the, this uh, type of initiative, mainly because it was first very, very loudly announced but then uh, when our voices started to sound uh, together with these uh, campaigns uh, started to spread, um, it became a secret topic, right? Secret information. We could not have um, a valid um, person to talk to in the local government. Differently from uh, Constanza's uh, situation, this all this topic had to be solved within the province of Tierra del Fuego. We did not need any help from the national government or national authorities. It was a local decision that had to be made. And that makes things much, much, much easier for us as uh, NGOs members because uh, the decision makers live in our town. You don't need to travel as Constanza and her friends had to from Paul Williams 3,000 kilometers to Santiago and uh, fortunately they got uh, some funds to cover those expenses but uh, that would be impossible for us to do so to travel from Ushuaia to Buenos Aires to meet uh, authorities and decision makers. The point is that for that topic, there was no voice from the government after they decided to close the door, close the window to talk about it. And so it became more suspicious. So the, the more you try to hide something, the more, the more suspicious it is for, for the one in front of you, right? So under this reasoning, very simple reasoning, uh, we started to look up for information which was not published. And so I wouldn't involve the, the king and queen of Norway uh, because I think the, um, the part involved here was a company. Our governor uh, hired a um, consultant that was from Norway who wrote a report and uh, the report uh, was announced but it was never seen. We got it because simply because we have some friends in, uh, in, in the government house, right? So we got that uh, report and the report talked about the benefits of uh, setting the, those farms and that they would bring all the investments. And uh, once again, we started to say, it's always the same story. They, they come to do here, what they can't do in their land because the law is protecting the environment. Here. And so why are we spoil our environment just to give uh, the opportunity to work in a very sacrifice activity to local people, 200 local people or 120, I don't remember if it was 120 workers or 200 workers they were going to hire. So that was not a number 
for an 82,000 people town or 80,000 at that time. And uh, we said, you know, uh, with a, a, a few more tourists, you can avoid that amount of people. And uh, you, we don't need to spoil our environment as well as area where we go sailing with tourists, right? Because it's not fun to smell bad, to have a, uh, know that what is underwater is destroyed. There are some diving excursions here to enjoy underwater the channel, and that would be would have been spoiled too. So, but let me reinforce something I saw on the news in when the king and queen of Norway arrived into Chile. I remember that were big signs saying, Dear Queen and King of Norway, you are very welcome, but we don't want your salmon farms here, right? So I think that was something very, very strong for them to see, as well as the moment that we could see live when Cristina Calderon met them, or met him in, uh, was it only the king you said? I, I, in my memory, I had the king and the queen of Norway. The king and queen, no, the, the two of them. Right, both, right, okay, you said both then. I understood only the king had traveled to Port Williams. Uh, I remember when Cristina Calderon talked to them and I felt so moved when I saw that moment because I, I, I think such a simple person as Cristina facing a couple of, of kings and, uh, well, I, I think that was a strong symbol. There. Yeah, no, it was, that, uh, it, and they also were like uh, twice her uh, height because they're really tall. Besides, and she, yes. she's really small and she she was uh, she died last year with uh, 93 years so she was like 91 so she was an old woman facing them the double of their size so it's really symbolic and amazing I think like to have that uh, that situation to happen and as you say the king I, I say kings like in Spanish that you say that the plural king and queen that were here uh, right. The state received them uh, well, so they make like a ceremonial thing that they dance, the typical uh, dance of Chile, etc. But th that's why they needed to go to the museum. They get shorter, they visit also because they feel that there was all the town saying to them, there were some other sign that says, like, we are not terrorists, terrorists. we are like uh, uh, just families protecting their sea the place where you live uh, that don't destroy the the place where we live because the other like uh, a side of this situation that laura maria laura has named several things is they were coming and saying that they bring like uh, work but here the first thing we thought is where are they going to live because we don't have houses <laughs> we have a big problem where the city can grow we got a lot of. We have an island that is have many petlands and situation with the environment. So it's difficult to make that grow. So you see more people is a menace. So all the the thing that work in the normal market, uh, or, or, or the way our, our system of transaction work doesn't work here because it doesn't have sense. And most of that is automatized. So in in one of the farm, the the, the part that is in the sea, normally you don't see very much. All the problem is made inside the water and all the marine ecosystem. But then you normally have like one, two people just living in like uh, um, houses that float. Well, that's what you see from over the sea, used to like green houses that are like floating. And then it's the, the cages that are under. And then there's a boat that brings and gonna bring everything, even in all Mage the Magellanic region all the production that is made more north in this region, uh, all what they left. But with oh. some part of the residues that they need to, to be managed uh, are bring close to Puerto Montt. So they need to be traveling between all the fjords. I don't know if um, been... it's working. Yes. So you were listening. Yeah. 
So it, it's like really crazy how they were trying to show that it's gonna help. But then you see uh, if, if, with simple things, as was saying Maria Laura, that it doesn't fit. And then all our authorities ask, is as different as it's a new, it's an activity that is really known. Um, they were like, there's nothing to do. If that was the answer we have at the time. If there's nothing to do, yeah, you have reason that this is a really special part of the, the country, a place that is really pristine, that we need to protect, etc. But there's nothing to do because they already have, um, so they have the permission. And what the king and queen said of the people, that, uh, that was the idea I was trying to remember, when they were in the, in the museum, because as the government was having like a reception for them, they go to the museum. And also the director of the museum was someone that worked and participated really active in, in our group. Um, he, he tried to show what they're going to spoil, what was the culture, uh, because it was his work and he needed to show that. So uh, he also tried to be him that he translates Señora Cristina and uh, David Alday, that was the president of the community in that moment, that is like uh, a young uh, guy that uh, was in that moment elected to be the, like the, their uh, represent, representante. And uh, from they, the Yagan people. They, from the Yagan people also. And uh, they were translated by someone they know, thinking that the, the, the king and queen could understand and not the official translator change. The, the word, for example, because the there were uh, reporters that tried to reach them, the king, the king and queen, and they doesn't have answer. They said no, they are not answering nothing, and they normally don't talk. In all that moment that we're here, they don't talk with people, so that they managed to have that message and they answer what they say. The the one that were close was that we are doing what laws uh, allows us. So we are respecting the law. So they understand the message. They were really uncomfortable because they go like two hours earlier than was planified. Uh, but I think maybe they feel that because, it's, of course, it was not a problem with them. But what it was meaning, and in some other way, it was what is mean also why the king and the queen of a country that is like a symbolic uh, for them also because they are not like the president or the, the government they they have. Um, are going here is also a kind of I don't know colonialism uh, is like mm -hmm. symbolic I don't know if for them it was like funny just to travel until Puerto William because they they were like visiting I don't know it, 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 a little crazy uh, to to find like the reason the real reason behind that and thinking in the we were like touching a little the question of Camilo made about the geopolitics I don't know if we can share the the screen to show a map because there's a, a, another a layer of all that we have been talking uh, no sé camilo it's possible to show a map if or you, no if you like put the, the, the click button where it says present see that's why i was asking because click I on the please uh, click on the person. Uh, yeah, this one. Then you manage to see it? Yeah. Here yes. it's a uh, it's a map that is the subsecretary or a secretary part of the Minister of Economy of Chile that see all the fishing and aquaculture concessions. And they have the, you can see where you have some concession that already uh, was given, someone that have a project, etc. Most of that concession were in the, the areas where you can ask about the concession uh, and where the, the government give to the the person who is asking about the concession is the right to use it uh, to have uh, cultives of uh, sea um, products uh, for 25 years and then it's renewable 
uh, if you continue to agree and you haven't done something that is against the, the law, that is really sample our law on that, uh, is missing many um, details that is really important to have. So it's crazy to think that some details are missing. Sometimes it's not that they are missing <laughs> because you even doesn't have to present and a study of the impact it could have in the environment where you are applying, just only for the uh, salmon farms that work. For the rest of other projects that are bigger, you need to present. But, but just for that, you just need to make a declaration about the impacts and how it's going to work and assume many things. And they're really old. And all the places were like a mark where you can ask about this concession, like in the 90s. And it worked like. Um, uh, property uh, goods that you can uh, uh, exchange it in some the market of uh, like it was like like houses and and land it, it's like the same so a lot of people manage to have that um, uh, several years and then they sell between them because it began to be like uh, a, a good so if we saw here to people can understand all the part here is the lake district in Chiloé that you have many colors is mostly all the shore then it has going south so maybe i explain the situation this more kind of border this. sorry this kind of border is like the, the border between uh, chile southern chile and argentina yeah this line is the chile argentina all the this is chile and all is this the coast that's part of um, here we have chiloe puerto Montt, all that sound that you have there's not only the salmon farm here, of course, there's also some other culture with this um, muslin, no, muslin, no, um, moluscos, um, like uh, seafood. Muscles, muscles, muscles. Muscles. Uh, uh, farms and salmon farms. Um, pretty much is the only that option. So then they go also to Aysen. And in Magallanes region, we have a lot really close, for example, to Torres de Paine, that's where over other of the group we find we managed to reach the people in the region that were trying to like uh, battle or struggle again all that that you see here here is the part of Torres del Paine yeah maybe we can share with the audience the uh, people uh, for example who are not from South America uh, we can tell them that the summer farming uh, especially like started in Chile uh, strongly in a Chiloé, Chiloé like region, and then started like uh, going south, uh, yeah. and then uh, went to Puerto Williams. So, yeah. like, if you we talk about Chiloé, uh, yeah, for for those who don't understand the reference, maybe uh, it's like a, a the, the core of the salmon farming uh, from not not only from Chile but from the all the like. Uh, South American uh, some of farming development. So, what, what we need to understand that, and maybe a documental we can uh, propose to people to see is called Salmonopoly, when it show when when marine harvest uh, principally come to Chile in the 80s, and and it begins and now it's also like a, a group of families that own most of the part that in Chiloé and, and Los Lagos district, because we have more, and they have going south and they have like sell the, the spaces. So talking about geopolitics, you are giving a part of your country, a good of your country to, to foreigners, to other countries uh, that can be like uh, to perpetuity because you only need to like broke the law to someone and then you need to have uh, uh, actions in the, um, with the, the justice to 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 close a concession that they, because they can go last and last and be renewed by 25 and 25 so it's a lot of time of time that you are giving part of your country allowing them to uh, pollute it also because our law, laws are really um, um weak flexible on that flexible mm -hmm. or weak and then mm -hmm. we arrive to that the strait of magellan Porvenir is one is in that sense that part of Tierra del Fuego, Chile, that they also have uh, most some on farms and they work, uh, they pro they have like uh, the industry, then they pack uh, everything. So people also work there. So it's part of the, the culture uh, and really important for that city that is uh, 
uh, five to eight thousand people, so it's also small. And then the last of the the concession that exist were here, these points, and a part in the northern part of the the commune of uh, the Cabo Cape Horn of Chile that it's like about this this side, and everything is in in this island where we live, where is Puerto William. We have Ushuaia, Puerto William is here, and the three concessions we were arguing were here, but we continue to have some other parts. Then when we have all that problem in 2016, there was like a stop of giving more concessions. So that helped that we cannot have more spots, but that's why they value that much. And the important thing to understand that, to think in the geopolitical part, is that we get this smaller. We have Antarctica here, all the Drake Passage. We are at 10,000 from Antarctica, and we are really close. Oh, sorry. Ah, you were a bulky part. Uh, we <laughs> just change here. Uh, we, are, we have the ice fields, so we're giving sea that's going to be one of the goods for the future, if it's not now one of the future, to uh, the, the, the company that was coming here has investors from uh, the United States and from Norway. Mm -hmm. If we have the king and that committee of companies coming, businessmen, I don't know which other nationalities, we were giving them, and when you began to see all that spots, and if we then you see to the market in Chile of the salmon, in that year, before uh, they began all this movement that was because the company was uh, buy a lot of action, uh, I don't remember it was from the, the American part or not, but also it was uh, a Chinese, a company that were buying a lot of others that uh, normally uh, now the market in Chile is divided be, be about a big company, I think it's Jovio of China, and then they have several different names of the companies that go down, but the, like the big one, the holding that have everything, and another that is called Agro Super, that in Chile is really important for other uh, many other production, not only in the sea. So that's the important part to understand that we are just the piece in the map, and that that's what we are giving. And then talking about territory and that part, like more romantic about uh, the original people here that feel it really strong. And also the one that decide to live here in this island because the rest of the population here is like people that decide to come to live here and stay. Uh, that that kind of reason about the work and thing doesn't matter that much. And, and because that's what if you're going to spoil, but you don't see the big picture, we are really insignificant of what is movement and why governments are doing because our authorities were like, OK, there's nothing to do. Our country is completely occupied. But these foreigner people that colonize our, all our fjords, where we have the ice field that we see here, all these white spots, and here you have the last part of ice fields. So that's what we are also talking about, not only uh, the, the pollution about a channel, a fjord that is an ecosystem that is a little like uh, close. It's not an open Constance. system. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm, as I am like uh, hearing uh, your your answer uh, about like this kind of geopolitical issue that we're facing as Chilean people, as uh, people from the global south, from South America. Uh, I was thinking about this phrase that you told us that what the the king was said. We are respecting the law. Because uh, as a as a person from Santiago, I'm not from Patagonia, but as a person from Santiago, uh, when you like see all the kind of stuff and marketing that these kind of uh, endeavors and these kind of companies have, maybe uh, some people can think, "Wow, this is very like sustainable. <laughs> uh, this is very good for the people because of the this kind of discourse about the jobs and other stuff," but uh, they don't see maybe like even in the big cities they don't see like all the damage that's being done and at the first time uh, this kind of thing happens like in the main capitals but at the same time it happens like globally so do you think both both of you do you think that people from the global south from south america africa and other territories 
and the poorest uh, countries of Asia, for example, are more vulnerable to this kind of environmental problems in their territories due to the globalization? Or, on the other hand, do you think that people can resist better based on what you saw in the conflict? I think that we are vulnerable to, to demands from more developed country, or as we call them, first world countries. And the northern uh, against the south, or the northern part of the world against the south. And uh, we know we still have plenty of natural resources. Now we are learning to call them natural woods and not resources. So they are woods that not always may be turned into money. There are woods that should be left as they are simply for our survival, simply as a species. If we destroy everything, uh, we won't have any land to live on in maybe 50 or 100 years. Um, I think that a country like Argentina is somewhat uh, warned about these things. There are movements uh, who always turn a yellow light uh, every time there is a new project from the outer world coming with so many benefits and there is always something that starts um, our suspect right on them and then when we start to search for the origin of that project for example at this moment there is a project to open a new port in Tierra del Fuego in the northern part of Tierra del Fuego and there has been an environmental uh, examination uh, where the, the specialists, the experts, announced that all, in all their fields, this could work well if this engine you are planning to install works. If that engine doesn't work, everything will be spoiled. Well, after that uh, presentation, our association, Manekenk, uh, simply remarked that a port couldn't be built if you don't have a warranty that that engine it's a pump a pumping system right for sediments has not been tried in other parts of the world how come it's going to work here uh, that may produce a big damage and the present governor got furious because he said why do you think uh, we want to have a port here? Do you have any other ideas to create new jobs? Well, it's not our concern. It's not our role. It's your role if you want to. But besides, in Tierra del Fuego, we have no unemployment at present. So there is not so much pressure to create new jobs, right? So. Uh, we start to believe that there is something behind that investment from a private company to set up a new port. And, and then when we have time, because of course this is volunteer work, when we have time we devote to some research on these uh, problems, right? We also have um, the, the presence of um, uh, foreign foundations and uh, companies that are supposed to be environmental friendly and that they invest funds in, pres in the preservation of nature but in fact and they are very very in connection with our national park system and uh, we really fear that the they are going to um, they have a plan we still don't know what it is right we are trying to find out what they are looking for uh, really because they make strong announcements and they say they have a lot of money and they have a lot of time 
they are buying lands as they did in Chile before. First they started in Chile and now they go on in Argentina. And uh, we don't like it. Simply, we don't like it. But once again, we have the access to the decision makers simply because we are a federal country and in Argentina, the natural resources that we like to call natural woods um, are um, managed by the local governments. The national government has no in, in engagement in our natural woods. So we have to manage our forest, our minerals, our oil, our uh, peatlands, all of them are in our local government's hands, local government's decision, and that is accessible to us. And that makes a big difference with uh, Chile. Absolutely. What do you think about that, Constanza, about the, the difference between, for example, both countries in that term, and how vulnerable do you think that the well, so I, I think that maybe all like you, you were saying all the south is vulnerable vulnerable but also the globalization have uh, some help because we we managed to reach a lot of people that it will be possible wouldn't be possible we also have in a moment even uh, some um, um, like saludos, like uh, greetings from the Sami people that make uh, to the Yagan people uh, the agreement to be struggling against all this and see that also situation like that uh, of the Sami form specifically uh, happen also in Scotland, for example, that are really similar. But about the north and the south is that, that the, the same laws, they the, the doesn't apply the same laws, they know it. And the answer of the king that was uh, really like impressive in some way because he, I imagine, he knows it's not the same law. For example, a, a big example to show um, what it means is in Chile, it, there's an NGO called Oceana that need to go to a judgment like for several years, I think close to five years, if, if uh, maybe I'm making a mistake, but around that kind of year, three to five years to be able to, um, to have the information about how many and which kind of antibiotics they are making, they putting in the production, because they don't want it to say. All that big companies that are like the second industry of the, the country, and is the second industry in the world behind Norway, the Chilean one, so that's the, the size of everything. Mm -hmm. Most of this someone is not selling Chile, of course, like most of our products are sell away, so we didn't see most of that uh, goods also that is produced in our sea, in our places, and also the the what they are uh, spoiling is because the antibiotics is uh, like uh, they're hurting mm. the humanity, the completely humanity, because now it's gonna be one of the big issues that we are beginning to have with virus, and so, um, with bacteria and etc. and all the pandemias options that we. we it's supposed it, it can be more often now. Uh, that's why I named at the beginning the virus ISA that happened a moment. So it was a big crisis in 2009. That was like the big, big crisis this industry have. And that get all that uh, uh, regions close to Chiloé, Los Lagos, uh, big the uh, unemployment. So what, what was Maria Laura mm -hmm. talking about? What it doesn't work here or having that much sense in that moment that already happened. And there was a lot of people that really lost their job and have lost the option uh, to produce other things because all the other industries uh, were like drawn because this big industry that uh, finally uh, was installed since the 80s. So then it's like um, 20 years that they were like uh, producing. So then the, the, the effect was really devastating and then the state need to help them, that companies finally, because then the people is the one that's going to have the, 
the consequences and the companies are not responsible for nothing, then they still need to help them. That happened in all and different uh, issues, of course, not only here and in the world, it's like the same side. But that's something that, that happened and we need to, so uh, returning to the point, uh, the, the loss, the, the amount of antibiotic they can use in Norway is like less than 10, 10 times what is accepted here. That you need to go to the to the justice to know, and they know, but it's uh, sell like a luxury product, so it's a new commodity, and we are giving them all our part of sea or part of our territory to be able to use that, and our laws allow it because they are make also the love of pesca in Chile of fishing, and aquaculture is called is a really. Um, um, ¿cómo se llama? Como, con, um, example of the, the lobby lobbies uh, uh, effect of some families, but that's come also for people from away. So then the, the laws we have in here in the south uh, are helpful to that kind of industry and this kind of system of maybe we can call it neoliberalism or uh, neo uh, colonialism also work. Uh, the name you prefer, uh, maybe some other that, that the world use, uh, but it's the same. Our laws allow it, and they know that you are not breaking the law. We are in the limit. It's not ethical anyway, but we not, do not manage to uh, arrive to our politics because the politics is already cut completely in that system, that kind of oligarchy. So if we go back to like kings and, and that system, <laughs> so <laughs> I think maybe that can explain uh, uh, better the idea. Certainly. But, One uh, last I, thing. I want to want... like. Uh, yes. Can I ask Go like the question and, and then you you can you can express uh, whatever you want to say. I want to make like the the, the final question and of course you can make comments and. and I would like to know about, like, what's your opinion about the, the role of the states in these uh, environmental conflicts, uh, if we speak about Argentina and Chile. And at the same time, I want to ask you, what do you think about uh, the role of Chilean and Argentinian states in terms of the indigenous people? Uh, because we all know that uh, both Argentina and Chile have both uh, subscribed the 169 ILO convention about the indigenous people, but at the same time, they uh, like promoted this kind of investment uh, of salmon farming in indigenous territory. I'm, I'm talking about Ushuaia and Puerto Williams, where there are uh, Yaran people. So what do you think about this, these uh, things and your like last comments about uh, what I want to say? about indigenous people, well, in Argentina, uh, we forgot them for decades or more than one century. And uh, we had a new constitution in 1995 that um, created uh, an institution to gather indigenous peoples. And so they have the chance to organize into legally recognized communities. And uh, the case in Tierra del Fuego, which is the one I know best, I don't know exactly in the rest of the country, but in Tierra del Fuego, there is no conflict, no conflict between the local indigenous communities and the authorities. They are respected, they are accepted and um, they they are dealing with the um, recognition of some pieces of lands uh, the community of the north of Tierra del Fuego the Selknam community already uh, got a large piece of land for the community and in the south the Pacayoala community that is the Yagan community uh, is dealing with this affair. Uh, they they don't have 
uh, a negative answer. They have to work, but uh, they they are in good terms. In the rest of the country, Argentina, you know, is very large and has too many small indigenous communities. I know some of them uh, have problems with the local authorities, particularly the Mapuche community, but the Mapuche community has some divisions. And so it's not the whole Mapuche community, it's part of it that has serious problems with uh, the, the government. It's um, a local and national affair. You know that there are some affairs that are dealt with the national government. For example, drugs, um, 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 smuggling. I don't, I don't remember. There the are several things that are dealt with the national government and uh, indigenous people also have some uh, dependence on the national government. But most of their actions may be solved at the local government. And so that's, once again, a big advantage to solve these problems. Um, in Ushuaia, particularly, the community is not very big. They are starting uh, to organize, I think, not more than two years ago, they were given, I don't know the word in English, it's personería jurídica, so they were recognized as an institution, a legal institution, and they are still organizing themselves as an institution. Probably they will start to develop more activities in the future. And they are active participants um, in all that is related to um, actions in the environment. They are active participants. Well, and to finish with, because I wanted to say one last thing, is that we finally got uh, or convinced our legislators to, to, to sign the law that would restrict the activity of uh, salmon farming uh, only to those um, small scale projects, particularly those that are under development at present, and for new ones, they would be subject to evaluation uh, to, to decide if they could go on or not. So uh, we have that law. Some, some people from out of Tierra del Fuego discussed the uh, the prohibition of salmon farming, but we were sure that the decision was the correct one. And once a law is passed, it's really difficult that it is erased, right? Or I don't know the word in English, it's derogada. It's really very, very difficult to erase a law once it is approved. This is an inspiration for both. All of us who are like uh, making research about the, this topic, as myself and all the people who are there, all of us like are really inspired about what you achieved, who was like a very massive and huge uh, thing. <laughs> so, congratulations. Well, thank you. <laughs> yes, I, I also, uh, um, uh, so we, we have talked with. Uh, the people we work, uh, or oh, I know because I each one talk with different. I talk from Manikem with uh, Nancy a lot uh, to thank also that action because uh, as we have reciprocity laws and we are one side and the other of the country, like we're from uh, cities, uh, that help also a lot of us, uh, us because we can now use the law they have to show that you're going to have international problems. If we if we have some of farms in this side of the channel, and and what we can do here for this small spot because the thing is the problem is bigger, and about the the this covenant uh, the um, one six night uh, com, convenio convenio uh, what we can six say nine in Chile, ILO convention is a convention. In Chile, Chile have signed it, and it's like the argument we can repeat in, 
I think maybe everyone in each of the environmental problems, because there's always that issue where the native people are not being respected, even if the country sign it, is the first argument we have here because it's recognized by the, when Chile signed that, that agreement, uh, I don't know if the same year or really close, it was uh, published the indigenous law that uh, managed several of the issues in Chile. You have different uh, in the indigenous people in, in the different regions, of course, and it's the different history. But it's, you repeat the same situation that even if they are recognized, they are, have several rights that it should be respected. And for example, the communities that live and show they have uh, some, uh, they continue to use in some way the land, they have uh, several rights or things they can use, like, uh, um, for example, here, the, all the, 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 the commune division of Cape Horn is the same that is recognized like uh, a territory in ancestral territory or, mm -hmm. or an area de desarrollo indígena. So you say like a development area and they have several rights that all the local government, the regional government, the national government need to respect or uh, work with them to think about the development, think about how you organize the land and the use it have. That is part of what we are now facing uh, when our ecosystem are like uh, leaving all the problem of the the um, the warming and the I, the um, el calentamiento global <laughs> all the global warming the global, global warming. Warming issues that is affecting everyone so you you have the ecosystem that already are living or so struggling with that and then we need to organize that better and organize us to be able to to mitigate or adapt a little of what is going to happen. Um, but we, we, we cannot even respect a law that was signed in agreement in 2009 in Chile, o sea, uh, close to 15 years ago now. Um, and, and the rest of the country and each of the problems where we found you have always original people that have been the right pass over because they are not respecting what is already seen. That's also helped a lot because it's the, the argument we can go to the justice to show they are not respecting this and this and this and, and have the option to stop some process. But it's really like if you were in the battle, thinking what argument you can show and as they are not respecting and also not respecting their knowledge, then now, that's why I was talking about the global warming, now it's going to be really important because they knew how to live and adapt correctly to the environment where we were living. So we have uh, lose all that uh, knowledge and you continue to lose it and moreover to destroy it. So uh, that's uh, more than complicated. Yes. So we're yeah. going to the, so the, I, the I end of the show and I, I will... I will give you the time to to speak about the, what are the initiatives that you want to share with the audience. I don't know if you can see this. It's um, uh, the name of our or in NGO, Manekenk, which is the name of one of our indigenous uh, peoples, right? Manekenk, uh, .org .r and uh, there you will see one button devoted to salmon farming no salmons in tierra del fuego and so we invite you to visit our page our website and well learn a little bit more about this process thank you very much for the invitation thank you thank you for for all that you have told us and Constanza, do you mm -hmm. want to share well, something yeah. with us? Well, we don't have a website. We, we managed to try to do things, but it's really not an organization. It's really a civil, it's a citizen organization, organization about like neighbors that say, okay, we have a problem. So then to arrive to organize better, then it doesn't work. But we have like the, the network 
uh, and the, the way to work now that we are aware of any uh, information and some other situation that happen or that doesn't have uh, is not some of our problems issues but there's the Yagan community that have their own website sorry, website uh, but um, social fan media page. in Facebook fan page in Twitter also you can reach in Instagram the Comunidad Yagan de Mejillones that is the one that is here and also we have uh, in Facebook you can find uh, no uh, no salmaneras in the canal beagle that's the one mm -hmm. the fan parts we do together so you have option to lot of videos and photos and you can follow the uh, news if you want to have more details i think there is where is organized most of the information uh, and then to to maybe what people can can help here and what we can have as citizens in the world is also to decide as consumer because the, it, the system work as an industry and consumer. So where we have an option to decide is decide what we consume and do not accept more like toxic and industrial someone that is sadly produced in, uh, in my country and that have destroyed the sea. So it's like really to say the toxic Chilean uh, someone form, so someone uh, that, that, that what you are eating when you eat sushi and that's a lot of help if you decide to do not do not buy it anymore yes of course this is not something merely something bad for the communities for the like environment this is also very bad for the fishes itself because they have they develop a lot of illnesses they gather and live all together like a lot of them so they are living like in like uh, awful conditions so i think yeah. that these are all the reasons yeah. why we should like say no to someone from you, you can so, have one detail about that to imagine just to wait for the idea of camilo because now we have the the, the option to say it uh, also someone have lysis uh, where you you can google that that the images are awful and that's what you are eating and they put the anti-parasite uh, uh, liquid because it's liquid in the sea as it gonna doesn't spoil everything around so really like you put a chloride in a bottle and you put everything and you are not going to get always around the, uh, that uh, and the antibiotics and all the nutrients that are together of course that make several things that maria laura can explain maybe better but uh, now that the, it's not the focus but just to google and see what you are eating and it's not only for someone, it's also yeah. for many other products where as consumer we can avoid and help also the communities where it's being produced to to stop or, or to manage the the market. Uh, we talk in that terms. Yes. So thank you, uh, Constanza, Maria Laura. It has been like a very uh, interesting conversation. And I hope in the future we all like uh, get like the Argentinian example as a reference in order oh, to like thank you ourselves. thank you yes. well, <laughs> thank you thank you for coming thank you thank you Camilo for the invitation Bye -bye. so